to the Jinlong Technologies Solus Inverter YouTube channel. This video will get into the mounting of your Solus North American Inverter on the wall, and we'll talk a little bit about making DC and AC wiring connections in the inverter wire box. These techniques will apply to any second generation or fourth generation Solus Inverter 2.5K through 10K. The mounting and wiring of any Solus Inverter should be done by qualified installers, for example, NABCEP certified installers. Please note that the inverter is approximately 45 pounds and is a bit heavier on the top end, so take care when lifting. So I have the inverter out of the box and I have my mounting bracket secured to the wall using three out of the four screws provided. You can check out the Solus Inverter unboxing video and you'll see that the bracket and the screws are packed with the inverter inside the shipping box. Now, regarding the position of the bracket itself, I've had to make sure that I have good clearance on both the top and bottom of the inverter for a good chimney effect passive cooling and uh, I've also made sure that I have a good enough space on either side of the inverter. It's important to note that when you when the inverter is on the bracket the LCD screen will be in approximately this position. You can see that the hanger is in the middle of the heat sink there and when the inverter is properly mounted on the wall it'll be about 5 8 inch off. I have to bring it up there and kind of get it on the thing and bring it down onto the, make sure it's hooked into that bracket nicely. And then you'll secure the inverter to the bottom of the bracket using a short screw. I'm using a number 20 Torx driver for this. The screw is installed in this slot on the bottom of the mounting bracket and it's screwed into the tab on the heatsink of the inverter. inverter is secured to the wall, you can remove the wire box cover from the bottom of the inverter. You will use a number 20 Torx driver for this too. You press on the cover as you remove the screws. This will compress the wire box cover internal gasket and make it easier to remove and replace the screws. Wire box cover off. You can see the inverter grounding bar right here in the middle. You can also see the multiple knockouts in the wire box back, side and bottom here on the DC side and on the AC side. You can see that they all come with gasketed knockout plugs. These plugs and weather tight conduit fittings will ensure that your completed inverter installation will retain its NEMA 4X rating. Here are the multiple MPPT inputs for the DC PV conductors. In this particular inverter, we have three independent MPPTs. You may see two, three, or four MPPTs on the Solus North American inverters 2.5 through 10K. Inverters AC output terminals, L1, L2. It's a neutral terminal here that isn't necessarily used in the installations. And there is a ground bar here, or protective earth. And here are your L1 and L2 240 volt terminals that installers may use to energize their soulless rapid shutdown devices up on the roof. The cage terminals or rapid termination terminals, you put your thin flat blade screwdriver in here and you can see how when I lever up the screwdriver the small door inside the terminal opens and you can put your wire in. So that's how that works. Lever it up and you can see how the door opens, put your wire in, and then release your screwdriver. So you can see that I've removed the gasketed plugs from the bottom knockouts in the wire box here. I've installed my own conduit fittings and started bringing wires in. You can see that I brought in my first string of PV here, positive and negative. Brought in my L1 and L2 conductors for my AC control circuit for the rapid shutdown devices up on the roof. Then I've also brought in my AC wire, my L1 and L2 conductor, as well as my ground conductor here. I'm going to strip all these wires back about three quarters of an inch to ensure that the cage door comes down on copper and not on insulation. So I'll uh, get my screwdriver in here and I'll open up that door, insert the wire, pull test, that's good. And then I'll do the rest of the wiring in the exact same way. All the wiring has been completed inside of the wire box. 
you can see that I brought down a single string of PV here and I've landed it at MPPT2. I've landed my ground from the roof. I've got my L1 and L2 from my rapid shutdown device landed on the AC side over here. I've also landed my AC L1 and L2 inverter output conductors and my AC ground. So now what I can do is I can energize these AC terminals by turning on my point of connection breaker and my PV system AC output switch. This will allow me to check my polarity and my voltage on the DC side. After double checking the physical connections in the wire box and confirming the DC voltage and the correct polarity on all sets of PV string conductors, I can start up or commission this inverter. To start up any Solus inverter, apply AC first, wait 20 or 30 seconds, then DC. And to shut them down, disconnect the AC first, and then you can turn off your DC disconnect switch. Okay, to start this particular inverter, I've already moved my point of connection breaker and my PV system inverter AC disconnect switch to the on position. Note, if you have connected your Solus rapid shutdown device to the 240 volt uh, terminals at the inverter, the utility accessible PV system inverter AC disconnect switch in your system can also be labeled as your rapid shutdown initiation switch. Good stuff. So now I can turn on the integrated DC disconnect switch on the bottom of the inverter to the on position. Remember, Solus inverters are DC power devices, so as soon as you apply PV power to the inverter, the red power LED will come on. You can see that right here. And then you also see the green operation light comes on. It will start to blink, and over the next five minutes, the inverter will prepare for energy generation. And after the inverter starts up normally, you can go into the information menu to look at system operations or the settings menu to change the time and date on the display. So now you can reinstall the wire box cover on your inverter, and that completes the installation of the Solus single phase inverters.